Hello, welcome again to the teacher channel. Uh, it is very exciting actually um, to have this opportunity to talk to you about you know how to get ready for emergency. Okay, emergency is what we cannot prevent. Sometimes we can't. Even though sometimes we have some degree of control, we can do some things to prevent it. But some other times, it just shows up. Okay? It shows up. It could be at a place of work, at home, when you're working, when you're driving. Even when somebody is sleeping, emergency can happen. Even when you're enjoying your best uh, best meal, best food. For example, people can start choking even when they're eating their most delicious food. So emergency is usually uninvited, unplanned. It shows up and it is always a good thing, very good thing, to be ready to prepare ahead, being proactive. So this is why uh, this channel is floated and that is the central objective of this channel. There's nothing else that we are here to do other than to educate the public about the emergency, what to do uh, when emergency happens. So in the first part, I introduced some basic concepts and I want to continue uh, in this uh, second part, okay, but recall that in the first part, um, I defined emergency. I also defined patient as somebody who is in need. And the first aider is somebody who is providing the help that the patient needs. And I did mention that there is a linear relationship between the first aider and patient. Okay, so if the emergency is a minor emergency, that linear relationship is enough. In other words, first aid can do. But I also introduced another concept, EMS, Emergency Medical uh, Service or Services. And that makes it a, a triangle, a triangle. So you need EMS, okay, when emergency is beyond first aid. When first aid is not enough, so you need to invite EMS by calling 911 or your local emergency number, okay? So when you call them, they bring medical help, which is higher than first aid. So when you provide first aid, you don't go into medical help because medical help is provided by a team of professionals who are directly or indirectly under doctor's supervision. Okay, so that is the difference between first aid and medical help. So in this part, I, I want to talk more about some important concepts. So it's a continuation of what uh, was started in the first part. So if you have not watched the first part, please do. Uh, because this is a flow, it's like a chain reaction. So if you skip one, you may not be able to understand much. So it's a continuity, it's a chain reaction. So please, I recommend that you watch the previous one. And I also recommend that you subscribe to this channel, please. Okay, subscribe, like our video, share the videos. Okay, feel free to share. When you share, you are saving life because you are simply promoting this knowledge platform 
and this knowledge is enriching and eye-opening. So, today I want to talk about objective of first aid. Why do you even perform first aid? Why is it necessary? Why is it that some governments, some companies and establishments require their staff to take this, uh, to, to know about first aid? Why must you bother? Why must you bother about first aid? What makes it important? So I'm going to talk about three basic, three important, three key objectives of first aid. So whenever you do first aid, there are three objectives that, that come to mind. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put them on the board and then I will discuss uh, each of them. Okay, so, um, so number one objective, number one objective of first aid. So, um, so let me uh, put the topic uh, clearly here. So, what is the objectives of first aid? Objectives. What is the objectives of first aid? Okay. Number one objective, number one objective is to preserve life. Preserve life. So, life preservation is number one. Number two is to prevent, prevent uh, more or prevent injury or more injury. Okay. Number three is to promote recovery. Okay, recovery. Those are the three central objectives of first aid. So anytime you perform first aid, whether it is at a place of work, at home, um, outside home, anywhere, any time that first aid is, you know, performed or provided, okay? So the objective is either you want to preserve life or you want to prevent injury or more injury. Promote recovery, okay? So life, of course, you know, life is priceless, okay? So first aid is actually a life-saving skill. So when you perform first aid, you are preserving. You don't want the person to lose that life. Because if nothing is done during the emergency, life could be lost. But the basic care you provide can actually preserve that life. That may be all the person needs at that time. Prevent injury. Okay, somebody may have been injured from emergency, but you don't want more injury to develop. So by the time you uh, perform first aid, you are actually either preventing injury in the first place or preventing more injury if somebody is already injured. So because of emergency, somebody could be injured, but if nothing is done, the person may have more injury. But by the time you perform first aid, you prevent it. I'm going to demonstrate that further. Okay? And then promo, promotion, promoting recovery. So by the time you, you call 911, by the time you provide that helping hand, by the time you provide that wound care, you know, or any other, you know, basic care, depending on the nature of emergency, you are actually promoting recovery. You are making recovery quicker. Okay? That is what first aid is about. That is the reason why first aid is very important. Because when you do that, whether somebody is um, in cardiac arrest and you want to do CPR, okay, or maybe somebody is having signs and symptoms of stroke and you act on time, or maybe somebody is uh, somebody has wound care injury and is bleeding 
and you want to store that blood. Or maybe a child has a high fever and you want to do some first aid so as to prevent, you know, uh, something higher from happening. Okay? So these are what you have in mind when you perform, you know, first aid. Preserve life. Preserve life. Life is important. Life is priceless. How life is, uh, what do you say? It can quantify life. So that little, basic, it may look insignificant. It may look very small. It may not even be noticed by anybody, but that little basic care you give can preserve that life, can prevent more injury. Okay, so I will illustrate that next. Let us see how first aid can, you know, prevent more injury. Now, in, in, uh, in saying this, I want to let you know that uh, injury can be classified. Injury can actually be graduated from low level. So I'm going to put it like this. So you have different le layer, uh, levels of injury like this. Okay. So let's assume this is level one. This is level two. This is level three. This is level four. Okay. So it, uh, a, 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 a situation at this level, an injury or an emergency at this level is capable of moving to next level if nothing is done. Example, let me give a, a good example. Is Let's assume that somebody is bleeding. Okay, bleeding. Okay, and if nothing is done, okay, that th this bleeding, this wound can move to next level, shock, because severe blood loss can actually cause shock. So there's a link between this two and this. Okay. However, when you provide first aid to somebody who is bleeding, so you are cutting off this link. Or you are even slowing down the progression. You are slowing it down or you prevent it altogether. Okay? Here you provide first aid. Okay? First aid. So that is prevent. So you are preventing this injury from getting to next level. Now, another example is, let's take about... Let's, let's take example of high fever in a child, okay? High fever in a child. So high fever. So there's a direct link between high fever and what you call febrile seizure. Febrile seizures or seizure, okay? So this is level one, for example. This is level two. There's a link between this, okay? Link between this. So if nothing is done, a child has high fever and the first aid is not done, so this high fever can move to the next level. So by the time you provide first aid again, you are cutting up the link. You are preventing it from happening, okay? So uh, this, is, this is an example. What about... Uh, another example I want to talk about is, um, you know, somebody who is having seizure, for instance. Somebody is having seizure. So somebody is having seizure. Uh, what you call tonic clonic seizure. Tonic, okay, clonic seizure. Okay. Coach can actually uh, lead to injury. Okay. If nothing is done, it can lead to injury. So by the time you provide first aid, by protecting this person, you are preventing injury from happening. So you can see the reason why you provide first aid. Okay, I hope uh, this helps. I hope you now know the reason why first aid is very important and why you are taking this course. So thank you very much and please watch out for part three. 
okay subscribe thank you